So, uh, is there any, um, uh, in, uh, is everybody uh, equally um, well equipped, uh, let's put it that way, to, to, to go into that process or to, to um, well, the, is there an equal, equal opportunity to salvation in Buddhism in, in some sense? Well, fundamentally, the Buddhists say that everybody has the potential. It's fundamentally, that their mind, the qualities of their mind is the same as the qualities of the mind of the Buddha. They all have the potential. But it can be that uh, they are not mature enough to make use fully of that potential. There can be hindrances. For example, uh, it is considered that animals, for example, although they, they're not fundamentally different, due to their present conditions, they, will not have, they do not have access to a comprehension which can bring them to such an introspection through which they can understand their mind and so forth. And in the same way, certain human beings who are mentally or physically impaired would not be able to. So, you know, to have uh, full physical capacities, are certainly a requirement uh, for being able to progress. Mm -hmm. And there are also other requirements that are taught. For example, for meditation, it's important to have vigilance and a number of, uh, numerous other qualities that one progressively develops, which enable to have the good quality of uh, meditate, meditative practice. Um, actually, uh, well, for for a living, I'm a neurologist and I see patients, in particular I see patients with Alzheimer's disease, mm -hmm. who were very often once brilliant people. And in, you can see glimpses of that still even at their stage of state of dementia. But, uh, but basically you would say they know as much uh, as a little child, if not less. And um, here we are making nice arguments and then we walk out the door, a brick falls on our head and then we're much less smart, I would say, uh, <laughs> for the rest of our lives uh, perhaps and that's it. So that's again hardware yeah. and hardware can be damaged and if hardware gets damaged, what does do, how, how, how does Buddha, uh, the Buddhist uh, thought uh -huh. uh, answer these real life situations, how does it account for them? Well, it explains that you know, the hardware, in the hardware software analogy that there is a relationship between the mind and the body. Uh, actually, there are, for example, when you visit the museum later, you'll see uh, images of the subtle nervous system of the body and so on that the Buddhists regard as the uh, kind of the medium through which the energy flows in our body and the mind is related to that. So somehow uh, the electricity in our body is a little bit like uh, a horse and it's considered the, 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 the mind is like the rider on the horse. Mm. So if the horse uh, is pathway is damaged, of course the, the mind will be affected by it. There is an intimate relation in between both. However, the Buddhists don't um, uh, hold the, uh, let's say, the, the view that mind is a byproduct of matter. Uh, they do not have a physicalist view. For, for them, the mind is not just an epiphenomenon. Mm. Now, on the contrary, they would uh, argue that even the body is an experience of mind. And you know the body through consciousness. Without consciousness, how could you even know that you were and that you even had a body? So somehow, instead of having the body as the root and the basis of consciousness, it's kind of the body has for its root consciousness, for its relevance to the person who experiences it. And the, the arguments that they advance is an examination of what, of what we know to be matter and what we know to be consciousness. For them, what characterizes uh, consciousness is sentience. And what uh, characterizes matter is insentience, absence of mm -hmm. sentience. And so, of course, how can these two be related? How can there be uh, a unity between two complete opposite things? 
they, they have nothing is in common. Is it a ghost in the, machi in the machine, as the, the say, saying say? Many, philosophies, they, many they, philosophers use this term, the yes, ghost in the machine. They don't have a dualistic view. Like you could have a dualistic view, think, oh, matter exists on one hand, and the mind exists as, uh, on a, another hand. Buddhism regards these two phenomena as interdependent. Uh, mind is the experiencer, and matter is the object that is experienced. But when we look at their, their relation, uh, and if we're trying to establish a relation to, of creation or production between one another, since there is nothing similar between these two, you cannot establish in either ways that one cannot say that mind is producing matter that is so different from it, or that matter is producing mind. There, there cannot be that type of relation. So, uh, well, you know, there are a number of very uh, elaborate arguments about, you know, the, the ontological value of matter and mind and so forth. And Buddhists show that our, uh, our assumptions, yet again, through existence or non-existence of mind, about mind and matter, are not relative to what mind and matter actually are. So they will put that aside. However, uh, in our own, you know, on our own experience, what Buddhism is showing is that mind is something that you can work on, and because mm -hmm. what you experience and how you experience it fundamentally depends upon mind and not matter. In other words, it's not like consciousness is this white piece of paper upon which reality reflects itself perfectly. On the contrary, consciousness is a very active process through which it actually elaborately represents or tells itself what reality is. So if you work on the mind, how reality appears to you will change. So actually, what you can work on is the mind itself. In other words, Buddhist scriptures say that the entire universe somehow depends on our mind, meaning on how the entire universe is experienced by you depends upon your mind. So you, if you're an illusion, your mind is somehow confused and therefore it's alienating itself, it's limiting itself. But if you're free from that, then you can be a part of the universe in a very different way where you are free. Can I, um, uh, I would like just to say an anecdote, uh, which uh, has a story that has uh, actually affected me in, uh, pretty deeply and I have never found a satisfactory answer to that. Mm -hmm. That comes from um, the daughter of a patient with Alzheimer's disease that uh, narrated to me that when she was a little child, that they went to a grocery store with her father and um, uh, the, the man wanted to teach the girl a lesson and so they were putting things in the cart and uh, when they came to the counter to pay, he gave the exact amount of money without even missing a, a cent. And, um, uh, and the little girl was like, Dad, how did you do that? And it's like, I was, I was counting everything that we bought and added it up and that was the amount. And told the little girl, uh, always, uh, always uh, uh, take care of what you have in there because that's the one thing that they can never take away from you. Yeah. What you have in there is the one thing that you, they can never take away from you. And so she is, uh, there she is there, and the, 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 the guy no more even knows what his name is, and she says, well, I guess they can take away from you even what you have in there. And it was such a simple, but I think also very deep statement. So if they can take everything from, from you that you have in there, that means that that it's all a physical reality, nothing more to it, nothing that, nothing, nothing less. And so, how would you approach uh, this from, uh, from a Buddhist uh, perspective? Can they take everything from you? Well, it, uh, uh, from a Buddhist perspective, uh, they, they can't take everything from you because no matter, you know, no matter what that person is experiencing, that he, he's limited. In other words, you're thinking, mental content. Mm -hmm. He's saying what they cannot take away from you is mental content. But mental content is not the mind. It's knowledge is not the mind. Knowledge is not consciousness. Knowledge is just content. You can know mathematic things, you can know many things. But uh, the mind is that which enables experience. The person maybe he a brick fell on his head, but he will nonetheless experience that impediment. 
like you can be an animal and experience limits of being an animal. You can, ex the fact that you are experiencing, that cannot be taken Can he away. become a Buddha? He can eventually become a Buddha, but not in that condition. So you see... So there is an impediment. Uh, the, the, yes. the physical limitation does pose an impediment, right. but you say it's not an absolute... Um... Uh, mental... Con consciousness cannot be reduced to mental content. Consciousness is a quality of experience, the fact that we are able to experience whatever. And that is what we are. And how we have come to experience in a certain way depends on conditions. So for example, if a physical condition, a brick fell on your head because of your unawareness or because of previous dispositions, some people are born mentally mm -hmm. in part. They never had a brick fall on their head. It's not accidental. Why? How come people are born in that way? For Buddhists, they are born in that way because uh, they, cultivated their, they cultivated their mind or attitudes in previous lives or before their birth that brought them to experience such a life. So somehow one can you know, look at it in a different view in the sense that the fundamental basic fact of experiencing is the sentience is what consciousness is. And how it is sentient depends on how that sentient conditions itself to be disposed to certain conditions. So somehow, you know, our body, our life, is kind of the materialization of inner dispositions from a Buddhist perspective. So it's like if you had, a, if your mind were compared to a liquid, you know, or to blood, for example, it's, it's coagulation is the body. It's, it's hmm. uh, materialization. That's a very nice analogy. I will have to think more deeply about, about it before saying anything more. Um. <laughs>